Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today our focus is gonna be on JD.com, ticker JD. Now this is a China-based company. As such, if buying into the company, you are actually purchasing American depository receipts, otherwise known as ADRs. So you should understand the risks of owning ADRs of a foreign company before investing in it. As for JD.com, they are a supply chain-based technology and service provider with an e-commerce business that includes online retail and an online marketplace. And it's the largest retailer in China. The company is somewhat similar to Amazon. In this video, we'll look at JD's financials, perform a stock valuation, and at the end of the video, we'll go into computer modeling to forecast the 52-week stock movement. So let's jump into it. Here we have JD.com's financials, and first thing I'll point out is this far right-hand column. That's the trailing 12 months, so taking into account the first three quarters of 2023 and Q4 of last year. And we'll look at this top row first for revenue. And one thing I like to see here is that their revenue has been growing every year since 2014. Now, I will point out 2014 is when they went public, at least on the uh, U.S. markets. But we can see every year they have increased their revenue. However, jumping down to net income, we can see that they've had some down years in red and also several negative years. And we can see in 2017 that they went positive with net income and then following year negative, then a couple of positive years and then another negative year. And one thing that does stand out here in 2020 is this $7.5 billion in net income. We can see it's pretty much an outlier from all these other years. So this may have to do with COVID and everybody staying at home, even in China, buying online. So something to consider when looking at this, that this is probably an anomaly and none of the other years, even their positive years, even comes close. Uh, however, earnings per share. See, earnings per share has been increasing over time and currently at $2.11. So that's a nice data point I like to see there. Uh, the company does not pay dividends until the trailing 12 months, which is when they just started. We can see they paid 62 cents. Now shares, we can see shares were increasing in the earlier years, but as for the trailing 12 months, we can see it's down significantly from probably its high of almost uh, 3 billion shares. And looks like they've cut that in half to, or almost in half to just under 1.6 billion. So I do like to see that. Book value. And then for book value, we can see that's been increasing over time. A slight pullback though from 2021, but still up significantly over the uh, 14 year shown. And then free cash flow. See the first couple of years, they were negative free cash flow. However, since then, they have been positive for every year. A few down years uh, here and there, but again, it's uh, up significantly from the earlier years. So nice to see. Another data point I really like looking at is this net profit margin. Now you're going to see a bunch of negatives. That's just because they had negative net income for those years. But the but the years that they were positive, you can see it was fairly low. I typically like seeing 10% of higher. The highest they've been was in 2020, where it was just over uh, 6.5%. And that's when they had that net income year at $7.5 billion. That was probably an outlier, I feel, due to COVID. But every Every other year that they're positive is fairly low, trailing 12 months, just over 2%, last year 1%. So this is a little bit of a concern here. But let's go down below. We'll look at some other data points on the graph. It's a little easier to see. So on this graph, we have several data points based on the per share value. And the first one to look at, it's the one in white for revenue per share. You can see here, starting back from 2014, probably around five to $10 per share. A revenue and then increasing over those first several years and then really jumping up from 2018 through 2021 and then leveling off for the uh, past couple of years but still pretty nice growth here uh going from probably below ten dollars uh, per share revenue up to nearly 100 dollars. now let's remove that so we can see some some of the other data points a little easier Okay, so let's go on to book value per share. We kind of saw this up above, but here we are in red here. We can see not, not significant growth for those first uh, several years, but then starting same thing, 2018 had this nice run up here going from probably just below $5 per share up to $22, $22.50 per share, and then getting up to $25 per share over the last uh, couple of years. So nice growth there. 
and then free cash flow per share in yellow. Um, back in the early years, they didn't have any positive uh, free cash flow, but since then we can see this growth really starting in 2019 and continuing up until the uh, trailing 12 months, uh, getting to probably around four or just below five dollars uh, per share uh, free cash flow. And then and then earnings per share in green. Again, we saw this above. They had some negative years due to the uh, negative net income. But starting to show a nice positive trend here, starting in 2021, going to 2022, and trailing 12 months. So hopefully for JD.com, they continue that trend in the positive and continuing to go up and to the right. But let's move on. We'll go down below now, and we'll do the uh, stock valuation. So here we have JD.com's initial valuation setup and we're going to make a modification in a moment or two but the initial setup has the intrinsic value just below 43 dollars and with a 90 percent margin of safety brings it down to 38 dollars 68 cents now this is based on a nine percent growth rate over the next 10 years with a 10 percent discount rate and then a three percent long-term growth rate now using nine percent growth rate uh, because yes their revenue has grown every year over the last 10 years However, the net income was a little choppy. Uh, when it did turn positive, you can see there was one or two negative years after that. So I just wanna be a little cautious in how much of a growth rate I use. And this 90% long-term, um, sorry, sorry, this 90% margin of safety. Now, I think this is not taking into account as much of a risk as there is investing in China. Uh, different type of market. Government has a lot more control on, on uh, companies. So I think this margin of safety would be a lot higher. To me, I would look at a 60% margin of safety. And we can see that brings the uh, stock price down to $25.75. And it's currently trading in the market around $27.50 to maybe $28 in that range. So yes, this is pretty close. Um, I really have to think about it if I would still would want to invest in JD.com. Uh, it, it's in the range that I would like to buy, but still, to me, there's still a little more risk for me. Maybe if it gets down to this $25 range, I would consider. But right now, I'll probably not uh, invest in it. But let's look at some other data points here and scroll down a little bit. We can see their PE, 13.14. So... Definitely in that value opportunity uh, with a PE of 13, long-term debt to free cash flow. So that's nice. It's very low. I like to see under three. We can see they're well under one. Uh, share count over the last 10 years, as we saw a few moments ago, they, they bought back shares recently. So now uh, minus 34% in share and outstanding shares. And net profit margin, we, again, we discussed that a few moments ago over the last 10 years, just above uh, 0%. We know they had a few negative years, so that would bring that negative. And then over the last three years, about 1%. And I did look up Amazon, and actually Amazon is kind of low too. It's in that mid-single digit range, maybe somewhere around four to six. So I guess for JD.com, it's not that uncommon then to have such a low margin of safety. But let's move on now, and we'll go into the uh, computer modeling and forecast the 52-week stock movement. In the computer modeling software, I already ran the analysis using two methods. First, the M5 rule shown here, and the other random forest. So I already copied the results from both methods and put it in Excel, and we'll go over in Excel in a minute because it's a little easy to see. But let's just look at the results in the computer modeling software. So this is based on this most recent, well, it does say December 25th, which is Christmas. It's actually based on the, uh, the 26th. So the weekly adjusted closing price in the far right-hand column for JD.com was $27.56. And the column right next to it is just the S&P 500 index. And the other columns are just other various data points used in the analysis. Now, we scroll down 52 weeks. We can see out here towards the end of December of next year, it's actually showing a gain in the stock price, getting up to uh, $38.67. Now, let's jump over to Random Forest, and we'll take a look at those results. So, same thing here. We can see this is as of uh, earlier this week, with that stock closing actually on Tuesday, the 26th at $27.56 for the weekly adjusted 
price. And scrolling down, we can see it's showing a big uptick up to $67 towards the end of next year. And when we go into the Excel modeling or go into Excel to look at all these results, we'll see that this stock price has had a much higher stock, uh, price in its history. So let's look at that and we'll get into these results a little closer. So here in Excel, I already pulled over the data from the computer modeling software. And first thing I'll point out is this vertical red line that represents this previous Tuesday, December 26th. And everything to the left of that vertical red line is the historical stock price and everything to the right would be the forecasted. So let's look at a little history of JD.com stock movement. And we can see it went public back in 2014, around $25. And then those first couple of years, a little choppy, getting up to about $40, uh, probably 30, mid $30 range and dropping back down to close to $20 on multiple occasions through uh, 2016. Uh, then starting later that year in probably around November, December 2016, started to have this nice run up going into 2017 and into 2018, finally breaking that $40 mark, but then dropping off in late 2018, getting down to 20 or maybe even just below $20. But then uh, starting in 2019, again, this nice run up going into 2021, breaking $100. But then over the last couple of years, we can see it has this decline with a few spikes here and there, uh, finally getting to where we are today in December of 2023 at around $17.50 to $18 range. Now, I think a lot of this drop off here has to do with the current relations between the U.S. and China. They haven't been on the best of terms lately. And I think that's why we're seeing the stock price declining as much as it has. But let's, get, but let's jump over to another tab and we'll look at the forecast a little closer. So looking at the M5 rule results first, we can see here what it's showing is that the stock is going to have a this gradual run up going into next year out into De uh, late December of 2024 and actually closing in the high $38 range, uh, which would be about a 40% return. Now, a lot, I think, has to do with the relations between the U.S. and China. If the uh, if things can improve, we can see something return to a higher valuation from where it has been previously. Now, let's go over to Random Forest and we'll get that one a little closer. So looking at Random Forest, it's showing a lot more bullish for the stock, actually returning to those higher stock prices and getting up to probably that high 60 to close to $70 range out in December of next year. Now, I think this is probably where the stock would really uh, trade at if it was like a U.S.-based company. But because it's a, a Chinese company, it's it's showing these uh, depressed stock prices. And the question is, you know, can it return to these uh, higher valuations that it has been previously? But again, it has a lot to do on improvements between U.S.-China relations. So let's just take a look at the average of the two, the M5 rule and Rand the Forest. I, I like just looking at that as an additional data point. So for the average, obviously showing that same run up for 2024 and getting into that low to mid $50 range out in uh, December of next year, which if that does happen, that would be a return of just over 90%. To recap, I do think JD.com is undervalued. However, since it is a China-based company and the relationship between the U.S. and China are not in their ideal conditions, along with speculations that China could be invading Taiwan, there are risks with buying into this company. And as for the computer modeling software, it does show that the stock should be trading at a higher price. However, this current relationship between the two countries is what's depressing its value. But if you feel the risk is worth the potential return, this could be an opportunity for you. And though I do like everything I've seen, I feel for me, the risk is just too much for me to invest in JD.com at this time. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got some useful information. If so, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.